Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending our class today. Today, we're gonna dive into a brand new topic: oligosaccharides. These are the class objectives. So, for this class, we'll be familiarizing ourselves with the following concepts: different types of、uh, sucrose products, inverted sugar, maltose, lactose, and their productions, lactose intolerance, raffinose, starchiose. Last but not least, isomaltose oligosaccharides. This is the contents of the class. We're gonna cover the first three topics: oligosaccharides overview, glucose reversion, and disaccharides. For disaccharides, we'll focus on sucrose specifically. So, what is oligosaccharides? In carbohydrates world, there are two terms that are quite similar. Oligosaccharides and polysaccharides. So, looking at the name itself, it looks like only the prefix is different from each other. So, for the oligosaccharides, oligo is a prefix from a Greek language meaning few. For the polysaccharides, the poly in Greek language means many. So, I think the name already differentiates oligosaccharides from polysaccharides. So based on definition, oligosaccharides is a product of gl glycosidic linkage of two to twenty monosaccharides units, and in most cases, oligosaccharides is made of two to nine monosaccharides units. On the other hand, polysaccharides it's composed of more than twenty units in most of the cases. There's a short demo. So these are the monosaccharides units, and They are connected via the glycosidic linkages. This is a、uh, four monosaccharides、uh, based oligosaccharides. The simplest form of oligosaccharides is disaccharides, which is made of two monosaccharides. So we have a short demo here that demonstrating how the monosaccharides reacted with each other to form a, a disaccharides. So these are the two、uh, monosaccharides. They meet each other and will go through a, a condensation reaction. So during this reaction, one of the molecule will give up its hydrogen ion, and the other molecule will give up its hydroxyl group, and then. We get a water molecule, and these two monosaccharides formed a a bond, which is called glycosidic bond. This reaction gives off a water, so that's why it's called condensation reaction. So after we know how the disaccharides is formed, let's look at the more complicated structure of oligosaccharides. Oligosaccharides could be made of three monosaccharides, four monosaccharides, five or six, and so on. So, for three monosaccharides, made for three monosaccharides, the name is starts with tri. And for for four monosaccharides based oligosaccharides, the name starts with a tetra. So it's tetrasaccharides. For five monosaccharides based oligosaccharides, the name starts with penta, so it's pentasaccharides. There is a concept we would like to clarify, which is triosis versus trisaccharides, tetrosis versus tetrasaccharides. So for triosis and tetrosis, these are all monosaccharides. The same as hexose or pentose. The only differences between these four monosaccharides are the number of number of carbon in each unit. For example, in triose, it's three carbon, and for hexose, it's six carbon. For oligosaccharides,、um, they're all made of a monosaccharides. They're just made of different numbers of monosaccharides. For example, tetrasaccharides is made of four different monosaccharides, or same monosaccharides. These are the quiz questions、uh, for the lecture. 
we just covered? Please type the answer in the discussion forum, and we'll discuss the, uh, the answer during the next lecture. And next, we're going to cover the basic structure of oligosaccharides. For the previous slices, we already discussed the, mo the fundamental units of oligosaccharide is monosaccharides. And they are always connected via either alpha or beta glycosidic bonds. Based on the carbon, number of carbon that's involved, or so you can say position of the carbon that's involved in the reaction, or the linkage, it could be 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, or 1, 6, one, six glycosidic linkage. All these types of linkages have very different stabilities and the digestibilities for human body. The general structure of oligosaccharides are linear and branched. So as shown in the picture, the top is the linear type of oligosaccharides. It's a head-to-tail linkage with one reducing end and one non-reducing end. The reducing end is a monosaccharide um, where the anomeric carbon composed, is composed of free aldehyde group or free ketone group that is always available for any sort of uh, oxidation reaction or other types of chemical reactions. The branch type of oligosaccharides, which is shown on the bottom, it's composed of a one reducing end on the right side and a multiple non-reducing ends. In general, the branch structure tends to be more stable. To provide example for the stability of different linkages, uh, we have two types of linkages here. One is beta-1,4 and another one is alpha-1,4. The beta-1,4 linkage is, um, is a type of uh, glycosidic bond that allow the molecule to form a planar structure, which is able to assemble into a stronger 3D material. Um, this type of bond is commonly found in uh, cellulose. So cellulose is a linear polysaccharide that has very strong uh, structure, and this type of bond is highly resistant to the digestive enzyme. On the other hand, the alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond shown on the right side, uh, we can see that there is a curve or there is a bend between these two monosaccharides. This type of bond is commonly found in starch. This type of bond is susceptible to digestive enzyme, for example, like amylase. So I think these are perfect examples that show that uh, different types of glycosidic linkages have very different stabilities under different conditions. These are the quiz questions for the material that we just covered. Please type the answer in the discussion forum and we'll discuss them uh, during the next lecture. Please take a little time to watch a short video and refresh the memory. Uh, for the whole lecture. Have you ever wondered what oligosaccharides are? Or perhaps you've heard the term before but aren't quite sure what it means. Today, we're going to delve into the interesting world of oligosaccharides breaking down the concept into simple, easy-to-understand terms. Oligosaccharides, as you may have guessed from the prefix oligo, which comes from the Greek language meaning few, are products of glycosidic linkages of between 2 and 20 monosaccharide units. Most commonly, these linkages involve between 2 and 9 units. This differentiates them from polysaccharides, which involve more than 20 units. Now, when it comes to disaccharides, which are a type of oligosaccharide, the aglycone is a monosaccharide unit. As the structures become more complex, they are named according to the number of monosaccharide units involved. For instance, tri for three, tetra for four, penta for five, and so on. 
One of the fascinating aspects of oligosaccharides is that they can have different types of glycosidic linkages. These include alpha or beta linkages and can take the form of 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 or 1, 6 glycosidic linkages. Each of these has different stabilities and digestibilities, particularly in relation to the human body. The structures of oligosaccharides themselves can be either linear or branched. This gives them a diverse range of forms and functions, making them an incredibly important part of many biological processes. So, to summarize, oligosaccharides are products of glycosidic linkages of between 2 and 20 monosaccharide units. They can have different types of glycosidic linkages, each with different stabilities and digestibilities. And finally, the structures of oligosaccharides can be either linear or branched, giving them a wide range of forms and functions. This has been a brief introduction to the fascinating world of oligosaccharides. Next time you hear the term, you'll know exactly what it means and how these intricate structures play a crucial role in our bodies. Thank you for joining us today and stay curious.